Drug delivery technologies can increase the efficacy of drug therapies by regulating drug release rate and uptake in certain tissues. Hydrogel beads are biocompatible and can be used for drug delivery. The objective of this experiment is to determine the effect certain conditions have on drug release rate from hydrogel beads. We will determine optimal conditions that lead to maximum drug release. Drug release from the hydrogel can be driven by a combination of diffusion and relaxational release. The equation shown can be used to model the first 60% of a drug release curve. It relates the fraction of drug released over time to the kinetic rate and diffusional exponent. The value of the diffusional exponent indicates the mechanism of drug release. One mechanism, thickening and diffusion, is driven completely by diffusion caused by the chemical potential gradient. non faking and diffusion is a mechanism driven by a combination of diffusion and relaxation of the beads. In this experiment, the dye tartrazine was used to model a drug. The release of tartrazine from hydrogel beads was then monitored under several conditions. First, the solutions shown were prepared to be used in the production of hydrogel beads. All solid components were measured out in a weigh boat and poured into a 500 milliliter bottle with their respective solvents. The solutions were placed on a stir plate and left to mix over the next couple of days. A calibration curve for tartrazine was then made for the spectrophotometer at 427 nanometers. A calibration curve was made by diluting tartrazine solution and measuring the absorbance until an absorbance of 0.25 to 0.1 was found. When diluting the solution with DI water, it is important to make sure it is well mixed. When placing the cuvette in the spectrophotometer, make sure the proper side of the cuvette is facing the sensor. The calibration curve gave us a relationship between the absorbance measured and the concentration of tartrazine. This curve will later be used to determine the concentration of tartrazine in our sample over the course of the experiment. The mixture of alginate and tartrazine was used to make hydrogel beads entrapped with dye. A syringe was loaded with 3 milliliters of the alginate tartrazine solution. All air bubbles were removed from the syringe. A weigh boat was filled with calcium chloride solution. The alginate solution was then slowly dispensed, drop by drop, at a rate of about 1 drop per second in the calcium chloride solution, until 60 beads were made. The calcium ions induced cross-linking of the alginate polymer. It was important to make sure the drops were not placed on top of each other to ensure proper bead shape. The beads were left in the weigh boat for 5 minutes to cross-link, and then were filtered completely out of the solution with a coffee filter. Be sure to remove as much calcium chloride solution as possible so that accurate absorbance readings can be obtained. After the beads were filtered, they were added to a beaker with 100 milliliters of DI water and set to stir at a constant rate for one hour. The sample's absorbance was read every 5 minutes for the first half hour with a spectrophotometer at 427 nanometers. For the last half hour, the sample was measured every 10 minutes. After each reading was taken, the sample was poured back into the beaker to keep the sample at a constant volume throughout the experiment. After an hour, the samples were disposed of in an alginate waste container. This experiment was repeated under different conditions to determine the effect each had on dye release. Each set of conditions was repeated three times. Dye diffusion can be affected by many variables. Here a few possible variables are listed. For this study, the effects of bead size and stir rate on dye diffusion were tested. Two 2.5 and 3 millimeter beads were used for this experiment. The experiment was completed with stir rates of 120, 240, and 360 RPM. Different gauge syringes were used to alter hydrogel bead size.
Optical density values were converted to tartrazine concentrations using the calibration curve. This graph shows the data collected for concentration of tartrazine released over time with varying stir rates. The following graph shows the same axis for varying bead sizes. From this data, the fraction of tartrazine released from the dye over time, as well as the normalized rate of release, can be calculated. The kinetic rate constant, K, and diffusional exponent, N, were calculated by taking the log of the model diffusion equation. Since the model diffusion equation can only be used to model the first 60% of a drug release curve, only the first 20 minutes of the data collected was used for these calculations. The table shown gives a summary of our results. It was concluded that the parameters tested in this experiment do have an effect on the diffusion curve. The diffusional exponent, calculated from the diffusion model, remained approximately the same, around 0.5. This indicates that the mechanism of dye diffusion was driven mainly by Fickian diffusion caused by the chemical potential gradient. The variation for the diffusional exponent was not statistically significant between trials. Based off the kinetic rate constant, K, the results generally imply that the diffusion rate increases with an increase in stir rate and a decrease in bead size. Definite trends could not be observed due to significant sources of error in this experiment. This made it difficult to draw conclusions from much of the data that was statistically similar at different conditions. Bead formation from the beveled tip needles gave a particle size distribution when the needle was held in different ways, which would have had a major effect on the diffusion curves. Additionally, many beads deformed in the fabrication process, changing the surface area to volume ratio, and thus the diffusion observed. The equipment also introduced error from inaccuracies in the spectrophotometer readings and from an inconsistent stir plate. Taking the error and the parameters we tested into consideration, we believe a system with small beads and a high stir rate would have the highest rate of drug release.